maybe it's a three-parent birth. I said, what? Three-parent birth? What's that? Well, it sends me, it sends me the slide. Healthy, if a woman has what's called mitochondrial disease, that means her mitochondria are bad, and she has a child, that's a dead child. That's a horribly screwed up child. Now, if she wants to have more children and they know that she has mitochondrial disease and she and her partner want to have more children, well, what can they do? They can do this. It's incredible. They can take healthy nuclear DNA is removed from patient's egg cell, leaving behind faulty mitochondrial DNA. This is bad mitochondria. They take out her sex cells, her 23, remember in the, in the sex cells you have only 23 chromosomes to match with the cells from the sperm to make the, the 46. So you take out her 23 chromosomes that she's going to add to the, to the zygote package, and they take a good egg from a woman who does not have mitochondrial disease, and they put it in, they take her genetic material out, and they put hers in. So now she mixes with her, with her partner's sperm, and they make a zygote in the healthy egg with the healthy mitochondrial DNA. And this child is going to be born in her, out of her, and it's going to have the DNA, the nuclear DNA of her, her husband rather, or her partner, and herself. And it's going to have the mitochondrial DNA of the third parent. Is that not cool? Is that not cool? Yeah, I know. She's sitting there going, what? Yeah, it's goggle-eyed, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's really, really cool. Now, with that in mind, how would, how would the, an alien have been done like that? Well, what he said was you could have an alien couple, why they would do this, and I'm not buying this entirely because it doesn't make sense to me, but why, why they would do it. But you could have an alien couple <coughs> make a zygote in vitro, take out the sex cells of a human, put it in, gestate it, and produce the star child out of a human mother. Now, it just makes no sense to me. Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Now, if they're like us, if they're a lot like us, which, you know, the grays, I don't know how much they're like us, but genetically, if everything's made out of those four nucleotides, they're probably a lot like us. And so that would explain the 10 to 50%. It begins to make sense, even though it's just still incredible. I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around it, and I know all of you are too, but nonetheless, this is where things are leaning right now. So, we're down to this, folks. We're down to just simply needing the money. Show me the money. Remember the movie, Show Me the Money. And this is what it comes down to, and this is what I'm out on the road talking to you people, talking to people about it. This is what we need. This is what we need to do. We need to recover the loaf of bread. We need to recover the genome. We need, in the same, at the same time, we're planning to make two documentary films because there's two parts to the process. There's recovery of the loaf, which takes three to four months, and there is reading all of the ingredients in the loaf, which is another eight to 12 months. So we're going to make one documentary film based on the recovery, which is going to tell us that difference within a range of about five points. 10 to 15 percent, or within a five-point margin of error, a ballpark estimate. And then the, the final part, the 8 to 12, is going to narrow it down to about a 1 percent margin of error. We'll know exactly what it is and what the differences are. And more than that, we'll be able to then start the process of doing some bioengineering and adding to the, to the storehouse of knowledge about human health because there will be things that will come right now as we sit here. They're trying to figure out what in the DNA of a Neanderthal is better than the 4,000 plus genetic defects we have. Did you know that? We have over 4,000 genetic defects, more than just about any other species. 4,000. And the Neanderthal is going to have spots in it where it is perfect, where we are bad, where we're wrong. And there may be a way to fix us using that. Well, the star child is going to be even better than that. And it can start right away with collagen, because we know a lot about collagen. And its collagen is so much denser and so much better than ours 
what if we could find a way to just improve the bone solidity, the bone strength of 10 to 10 percent or 20 percent of everybody? No more osteoporosis. A wonderful thing. That's like within five years, maybe 10 at the most. And who knows what other else kind of things can come from this. So we're not just making history. We're, improve, we're going to improve the lot of every human being on earth. If we can keep this stuff out of the hands of Monsanto and the big companies, you know, that are going to be after it. And that's part of the challenge as well. To find somebody who, who will uh, invest the money that we need who has the same sort of attitude uh, that we have about it. Not in it to make every buck possible, but in it to do the most good possible. That's my attitude and that's the attitude I want to bring to the deal. But I'm telling you all, this investment is a very sound investment for whoever does it. It's, mil it's a few million dollars. It isn't bad. Really, it isn't bad for two documentary films. They will make five to 30 or more times their money back. And I've got, for anybody that knows anybody that they think might be interested in this, I can get you the, the um, documents that show what the deal is and what the percentages are and what the rate of investment is. This is Switzerland. I mean, this is where money talks, BS walks, and small change rides the bus. So I know <laughs> you guys must know some people who can do this. So if you do, please get in contact with me. I can get you information. I can give you information. I can give them information. Now, I'm going to close with a quick story after I show you. If you want to know more about it, this is the fully updated ebook, which is available on the Star Child Project. If you just want the overview kind of that I've given you and then some, and you want to show friends something that they'll read, you can read this in less than an hour. Easy, anybody. It's just pictures and text boxes. Pictures and 125 photos and illustrations and text boxes. Up to date, though. This is the book book, and this is only up to 207, but this is the backstory. This tells all the personalities, the people involved, the various scientists involved, the details of how the ups and the downs, the ups and the downs, the ups and the downs that this 12-year uh, cycle has been. Now, <clears throat> let me close with the biggest, uh, probably down of all. When I got the word of this, it was late March when he said, you've got it in the bag. You've got, you're going to make history, it's going to be a big deal, and we want to be involved. Start finding your money and getting it underway. We're ready to go. And so I live in Florida on the coast where you saw, and it, this is before the oil spill, so the oil, the oil spill gutted everybody. Our summer has just been horrible. Everybody that was in, in real estate or anything there just been, been horrible. So, but, but this was before then. So uh, I, I said to this friend who's a deal maker, I said, do you know anybody that might be interested in this? And he said, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I do. He's 81 years old. He's in failing health. He, his wife is dead. He has horrible children that he hates. <laughs> They're just going to take his money and just, just throw it away as soon as he's dead. And, and in America, you have to give them some. You can give a lot to charity, but you have to give them a certain amount or they can sue you and you know sue the state and get it all you know so anyway he knew what he had to do but he, he had told my friend he said look I would give anything if I could just find something worthwhile to put my money into that would leave a lasting legacy of good other than these horrible children that I've produced he said I just don't want to die as another rich old fart on a big pile of money he says anybody you know that that's common anybody can do I would love to leave something behind. And my friend remembered that. So I said, well, geez, why don't you tell him? We've got something that's going to make a mark on history like few other things ever have. Let him know. And so we did. We did. And, and he told him, and he said, okay. The guy explained it fully, and he said, you tell those people that I'm going to check them out. And if they check out, if everything checks out, I'm going to do their deal. It sounds great to me. It sounds exactly like what I'm looking for. So he did that. Checked me out. Checked out. Uh, we had we got Matt Richards already. So he's a film director from England. Uh, works for the BBC to do the documentaries. We can check him out. Um, we're going to uh, go to the lab. Did that. Talk to Jenna's. Everything checked out. Everything's fine. So a few weeks later, he goes to his attorney. 9:30 in the on a Monday morning, the attorney made a note, and he said. 
I want to do this deal. I'm convinced. They're legitimate. I want my name on it. Start the paperwork. That afternoon he went home and he called some friends and he told they remembered, told them about it. He was excited. He got too excited. 11.30 that night he had a massive stroke and has not woke up from it yet. But we had to wait a couple months just to see. It would be very unseemly if we we're out searching for the money and he wakes up out of the out of the hyperbaric chamber and wants to do the deal. You see what I mean? So that's a true story. That's a true story. Now, I I can't tell you what a body blow that was. I can't tell you how depressive it was. I can't tell you how hard it was. I've been knocked down a bunch with this thing, but boy, it was hard to get up from that leg. Because we had gone out and we had set everything in place. We're going to film and we were going to move it and set up our business in Houston because Houston has all the medical facilities there. Best entertainment attorney in the South is in Austin, Texas. The camera crew that Matt Richards uses when he shoots in the States is located in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. Everything perfect. We lined it all up, ready to go, and he has the stroke. So, anyway, that's that's what can happen and what has happened and we're hoping that maybe there is some sign that we need to we're going to get a better deal down the line but i don't see how but anyway if you can help us folks i would appreciate anything you can do anybody you know we're legitimate they can check us out it's all real you've seen this i've got the ebook i'll send it to anybody i've got the documents for the deal anybody wants that i'm i need help I cannot do everything by myself. And one of the reasons I was so happy that Philip invited me here is I know that this is money central. So <laughs> do what you can. I hate to be mercenary about it, but there's just no other way. I have to ask, and I have to put it out there, and I hope that some of y'all will take it to heart as a serious need and as a very, very valuable project. Thank you very much.